The 3D printing community has a huge problem. It's one that I've seen over the years I've been in the community and it seems like it affects everyone at some point or another. You have hundreds of models and you're not printing them. So my theory is that you guys are printing the hardest stuff first. You get problems because it's, you know, they're difficult models, they look so cool and it's frustrating. And 3D printing becomes this thing of one problem after another, after another. And since you're starting with a difficult model, there's just too many variables to even see what the problem is. So let's start with some cool, simple, fun models and get you back into thinking 3D printing is fun and easy. So if you've been out of the 3D printing game for a little bit or you're at your wit's end, I highly re recommend doing a supportless model. Supports are one of those things that are really hit or miss. If everyone has a different way of doing it, um, I print flat in the build plate and I use a flexible build plate because for me, it's a lot easier to understand with just straight up and down. I don't have to worry about the bases either because I like printing my stuff all one piece, um, not the base separate. Anyway, do a supportless model. Get something really simple and cute. Uh, usually they're simpler models, so they're even easier to paint too. And it really helped me get back in the flow of it. In 2022, so last year, and even a little bit of 2021, I don't know if I really printed or painted anything. There's a couple of test prints here and there, models I wasn't sure about, but I was just really overwhelmed by the whole process. And then I really got back into it with a crab. I just, this little guy, that's it. This little guy is pretty much solely responsible for me getting back into printing and painting. And this year I have already printed and painted more, really this month, than I have in the last three years combined. So yeah, do yourself a favor, grab a supportless model, get it printed and start having some fun. Another thing I really recommend is make your own supports. So I know it can be really intimidating because you're like, I don't even know where to start. I make all of mine in Mesh Mixer. Um, I don't use Litchi or Chi Chi Box, even though they've gotten really good. Um, just because Mesh Mixer has so much customization, um, I can I can specify exactly my um, the diameter of the tip of it, the base of each stock of the support. I'll make a video talking about exactly how I do that as well. But the reason why I recommend it so much is because it gave me a lot of confidence in understanding what my printer can handle and what does and doesn't work. So when I have a print that fails and if I place all the supports, I remember, I'm like, oh, I put a support there and it didn't work at all or I didn't need it. It really just helps the whole process. I pretty much just look at a model and because I print flat in the build plate, um, only because I have flexible build plate really helps. Because I print flat, I can just look at a model and just think anything that has more of a 45 degree overhang, throw a support on it. Simple as that. Starting with that, you really can't go wrong. Um, and if you're really not sure, just trial and trial and error. I actually, in the beginning, I would make three different copies of my model and I support all three of them a little bit differently. And I learned a ton doing that. Even though I highly recommend making your own supports and starting to learn that skill as well, it's also nice to have pre-supported. Um, a lot of creators, including myself, offer pre-supported versions of all of their models. And by doing this, it kind of alleviates a little bit of the frustration because if you can print supportless models, but the pre-supported aren't working, then you kind of have something like a starting point you can really work with. What's extra nice about pre-supported models is that you can kind of get an idea of what that creator prioritized when they were pre-supporting. Kind of gives you some more tips for when you're trying to learn how to develop your own supports as well, especially with larger models. Because I definitely don't support my dragons the same way that I support just like a small character or a tree. There's a lot to learn and it can be overwhelming, but as you slowly chip away at it, it'll really come together and you'll come out much more confident at the end of it. And most importantly, you'll be printing and painting again, which is the goal of all of this. So to wrap things up, you should buy my models. <laughs> but no, seriously, I have, I really recommend buying supportless models and I have a little over 600 models total and a good chunk of those are supportless. A lot of that being scattered terrain, which I find easier and less intimidating to paint. So if you're looking for stuff to kind of recharge your 3D printing energy and get back to it, you should do that. Also, if you support my work through Patreon, I have a Discord that has 3D printing support. I'm always in there, but there are so many members in there that are like ready and itching to help people. You'll probably get a response from someone else in my community before I even get to it. Of course, again, I'm more than willing to help and jump in, but there's really a ton of people in there that have so much expertise to really help you get back in the saddle, so to speak, and get to 3D printing the stuff that you love. So if you have any questions, leave comments below and uh, I'll get back to you.